So let's quickly check in with Canto 120. Um, I did from, I think it was one, no, it was 107, I think, to 131, um, where, oh, this is Orlando Furioso, if I didn't just say that, Ludvigo Aristo, where we've, um, actually, I think my last check-in, we've bounced around a bit. It's funny because he blew the horn, um, is it Alfon Alfonso? He blew the horn, which causes terror in everyone. And it immediately made people pelt off in all directions. Everybody just stampeded. It was like pure chaos. That that magic horn just really, really causes complete, utter terror in the heroes as well as uh, the all the all the women who are, I guess, the villains in this in this piece. They rush to the to the waterside, get in the boat, and sail off without. Uh, I think it's Alfonso. I think it's Alfonso, um, and. And he sees them go. He, he he rides down, hoping to you know see them at the key. But nope, they've they've completely buggered off. So he's got to go on. He's got to go by land. Um. So, the, but the thing says, oh no, we're gonna go off and we're gonna follow. We're gonna follow the people on the boat. Um, and uh, they get to a new place. I can't remember where. Uh, Morfissa decides I'm gonna go off on my own. The narrative says, okay, and we're going to follow Morfissa. So then we're following Morfissa along. Um, and in this section, she comes along an aged crone, who is the aged crone that actually tended to... Um, who did she tend to? I think it's to, to Orlando. Um, and let's get back. Get back. Oh man, okay, I was back at one. Yes, it was 107. Uh, the this was the aged crone who used to serve the cruel robbers in the mountain cave, um, where they were put to you know put to an ignoble death by brave Orlando. So and you know all uh, events which I reserve to tell later on. This this woman has so frightened for days she fled in fear along untrodden byways, dark and drear. Comes to Marfissa, Marfissa. She asks Marfissa to help her get across the river. She does. They, they're, they're traveling together. Um, a stuck-up stuck up pair, uh, Penobello of Messine, and a, um, who several months ago betrayed fair Bradamante, I can't remember <laughs> at all, um, and uh, is with, with, with a woman who is all equally as, equally as uh, snooty, snooty as her, all dressed up and on a palfrey. Um, and the, this damsel, being capricious and unkind, when she beheld Marfissa's aged dame, mocked and laughed at her, and Marfissa took advent, took umbrage at this, saying, like, you know, if you're if you're mocking her, you're mocking me. Challenges um Pinabello to Pinabel to a fight. Of course, she wins. Uh the, the prize though is the lady's clothes and her palfrey. So the aged crone gets this, and uh Aristo, of course, says, Well, it made her look more ugly because she's in such beautiful clothing. Not like, oh, suddenly her royalty shines up. No, that's not, not the case in thing. Uh, at which point uh, they do indeed come off, come across another fellow uh, who, of course, with a name like Zerbino, you immediately think, Scottish. <laughs> you can really tell this is written by an Italian. I guess that's the thing is everybody just kind of puts 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 proper names in their own I item. Um and he also mocks the old lady. Uh, Morfissa decides she's going to take umbrage of this. More kind of like this is like she likes to get into scraps. So this is her way of having fun. So she says like if I if I defeat you, she's yours. You have to defeat. You have to defend her and protect her and serve her as your beloved lady all all your days. And of course he's and he thinks the he's hot shit. He's got great skills and he 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 nails his lance right into her shield doesn't do anything it is um so what is it it says she yeah she aiming his lance with care he galloped close and struck her shield full center as much heed she paid his iron rocks to hammer blows so you know nothing nothing she touched him on the helm in such a way that knocked clean from the saddle stunned he laid and he ends up with her and he demands from the uh the old crone what who what's the name of this of this night that that got me and it's like oh she's um she's like you know the blow was dealt to you by a maid who has thus knocked you from your horse which 
gets him gets he you know she tells him a little little brief thing about her valor has put many knights to the test but this does not please Urbino in the least his cheeks are crimson he adverts his glance and almost from the helmet on his head down to his greaves his armor blushes red he is so embarrassed his armor turns red in embarrassment and that is how we the end we end that that is just such the great image of an art of an of a knight in shiny armor and the knight the armor turns red from embarrassment such a deep embarrassment at being bested by a woman in this super macho thing where we have bradamante we have marfisa who are all these just amazing women which aristo kind of seems to quickly say but this is in the past we don't have these women now it's like uh maybe we do buddy it's, it's funny it's like it's like we're putting in the past so it's safe but hey here's these women kicking ass against all these super super macho knights which is kind of funny all right that is yeah canto 20 up to one th canto one th to stanza 130 of aristo ludvico by uh yeah by by aristo ludvico all right i will leave it there more videos later